Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the European Theatre Forum 2020, Performing Arts in Focus. We are delighted and excited to be the presenters of this important and unique event. We say unique because this is the first European Theatre Forum ever. And everyone, because in addition to the guest uh, list participants, the program is live streamed, which gives us the possibility to be here, heard, uh, seen, and um, to get in touch with audiences everywhere. So welcome everyone. We will be the ones to guide you through the program of the European Theatre Forum for the next three days. And when we say we, um, that means um, Gina Kalinoyo and uh, Jan de Toffoli. Let us briefly introduce ourselves all right, uh, I'll start with introducing Gina. Gina is an actress from Romania and has been uh, for 16 years working as a permanent actress at, of the Marin Sorescu National Theatre Craiova, where she also acted as artistic director during a transition time. She worked with directors such as uh, Janusz Wisniewski, Peter Schneider and Robert Wilson and has collaborated with famous theater makers Anatoly Vasiliev, Eugenio Barba, and Thomas Richards. During her work at the theater, she studied theater theory and completed a dissertation on Jerzy Grotowski art actor metaphysics. Seven years ago, she took part in a Creative Europe funded European theater collaboration project called The Art of Aging and started working with the German collective Werkgruppe 2 and Staatstheater Braunschweig, which has become a long-term relationship. Five years ago, Gina began working with the French company La Balagon Retrouvé and took part in two performances as an actress and director. Three years ago, she moved from Romania to Germany and joined Staatstheater Dresden as a permanent member of the ensemble. Thank you, Jan. Now a few words about Jan. Jan is a writer, playwright, academic and publisher born in Luxembourg from an Italian father and a Luxembourgish mother. He holds a PhD title in contemporary French literature from Sorbonne University in Paris. As we speak, his play App Human is being rehearsed at Théâtre de la Ville in Luxembourg. Mm -hmm. His plays written in French, Luxembourgish, German, and even Italian, presented in various international se uh, season in theater across Europe. They are published by Drei Masken Verlag in Germany. In the fall of 2018, Jan has been a guest author of the Literarische Skolovium Berlin, and he is also teaching literature and drama at the University of Luxembourg. This is us. Welcome, everybody. So um, this is the first European Theatre Forum performing arts in focus. What is it supposed to be? Why are we here? What are the main topics? Well, first of all, the forum comes to a to place the foundations of a European representation for the entire sector of theater and performing arts as one of Europe's major art forms, of course, within and outside Europe. Second, one of our goals is to make visible and to promote the theater and the performing arts in Europe with the diversity of performance forms and across language barriers, of course, which of which we are a perfect example. So not only as an art form, but also as an important public space for dialogue. And third, the next three days of the forum and the topics addressed will give the possibility of a creative dialogue process within the sector and with policymakers. So this is an important moment and an important opportunity for the whole sector. This aspect of the contact and dialogue between the sector and the policymakers is even more important right now as we are going through a global pandemic which puts us face to face with reality unimaginable before. No? The impossibility of direct contact, the absence of presence, 
and and this barrier affects all layers of the human being, all ages, and starting from the way we raise and educate children, the way we interact, manifest with each other, the way we think about the future, all this. So as you can see, we have a rich and exciting program, and still, we will not be covering all of the sector's challenges, questionings, and needs. The program itself results of a six months dialogue process within the sector, led by a consortium of 12 theater and performing arts organizations, who have agreed on the most urgent questions to tackle, but also on the need for more dialogue and more events just like this one in the future. We are grateful to the European Commission and the German Minister of State for Culture and the Media, who in the frame of the German presidency of the European Union Council are funding this three day event. As we have to meet online, we have worked hard to offer you a metaphorical venue, which our guest uh, list have entered this morning for the first time and which is a virtual replica of the Staatsschauspiel in Dresden, Germany, which was supposed to be our hosting city for this first European theater forum and where tomorrow's fast forward European festival for young stage directors will open. Now, some technical details. Our colleagues are currently sharing in the chat the link to a website that will be offering you live captioning and translation of the discussions throughout the three days. As you might have already noticed, we'll be offering interpretation in international sign languages, language during these three days as well. This is also a first time. Thank you very much. And finally, if you encounter any technical problems, you can get in touch with the European Theatre Forum team by posting a message in the chat room on the forum platform or by sending an email to the address that has just been sent, uh, shared in the chat. All right. Hmm. And from here, uh, let us now go over to the first welcome speeches. Um, here, a few words by Monika Grütters, German Minister of State for Culture and the Media. Normally. Difficult times digital area requires patient and adjusting to the situation. We are not sure what happens. Here we are. Yes, that's how it works. Mm -hmm. Ja, sehr geehrte Frau Staatsministerin Klepsch, sehr geehrter Herr Clement, sehr geehrte Frau Gessler, verehrte Mitglieder der Initiativgruppe, vor allen Dingen aber natürlich verehrte Künstlerinnen und Künstler, meine sehr verehrten Damen und Herren. Imagine war das, woran John glaubte, dass wir alle ein Land, eine Welt, ein Volk sind. John Lennon, dem diese Worte Yoko Onos galten, hätte in diesem Jahr seinen 80. Geburtstag gefeiert. Und mit Imagine hat er dem Traum von einer besseren Welt ein echtes musikalisches Denkmal gesetzt. Dem Glauben nämlich, dass wir alle ein Land, eine Welt, ein Volk sind. Und dass sich die Welt mit dieser Überzeugung auch verändern lässt. Dass zumindest Europa sich mit dieser Überzeugung verändern lässt, lehrt uns die europäische Geschichte. Die Menschen, deren Träume und Hoffnungen in Deutschland und in den Staaten des ehemaligen Ostblocks Mauern und Grenzzäune zum Einsturz brachten, und damit dem Zusammenwachsen Europas den Weg ebneten, diese Menschen besaßen neben Kühnheit und Kampfgeist vor allem eins, eine Vorstellung von einer besseren Welt, von einem besseren Leben in Freiheit. Und diese Vorstellungskraft brauchen wir heute, denke ich mehr denn je, um über den nationalen Horizont hinaus zu denken und die europäische Einheit in Vielfalt zu stärken. 
Deshalb freue ich mich sehr, dass es gelungen ist, im Rahmen unserer deutschen EU-Ratspräsidentschaft mit dieser Konferenz zum ersten Mal sämtliche Verbände und Netzwerke aus dem Bereich darstellende Künstler an einem Tisch zu versammeln, wenn auch natürlich pandemiebedingt wieder einmal nur virtuell. Ich danke der Initiativgruppe European Theatre Convention, dem Deutschen Zentrum des Internationalen Theaterinstituts und dem Bundesverband Freie Darstellende Künste für die Organisation und die sehr engagierte Arbeit. Denn Solidarität, Vernetzung und Zusammenarbeit sind gerade in diesen Zeiten ja echt unverzichtbar. Das Erstarken nationalistischer Strömungen, die Erosion der Presse- und Kulturfreiheit in manchen auch europäischen Ländern, das zähe Ringen um gemeinsame Lösungen, etwa für eine europäische Asylpolitik, der Brexit und natürlich nicht zuletzt die zerstörerischen Folgen der Corona-Pandemie, all das sind enorme Herausforderungen für ein geeintes Europa, die sich mit den Mitteln der Politik und der Wirtschaft allein jedenfalls nicht lösen lassen. Mehr als vielleicht je zuvor in ihrer Geschichte braucht die Europäische Union jene Kräfte, die über alle Grenzen und Gräben hinweg Verstehen und Verständigung ermöglichen. Das sind die Kräfte der Kunst und Kultur. Was können die darstellenden Künste dazu beitragen, Verstehen und Verständigung zu ermöglichen? Ich glaube, eine ganze Menge. Sie bieten unterschiedlichen Positionen eine Bühne. Sie bringen Menschen miteinander ins Gespräch. Und als Orte gesellschaftlicher Selbstreflexion und demokratischer Streitkultur wirken insbesondere Theater ja in die Gesellschaft hinein und damit der Spaltung der Gesellschaft entgegen. Aus eben diesen Gründen verdienen die darstellenden Künste in den europäischen Ländern politische Unterstützung, erst recht jetzt in Zeiten der Covid-19-Pandemie. Deshalb setze ich mich, unterstützt natürlich von meinen europäischen Amtskolleginnen und Kollegen im Rahmen der deutschen EU-Ratspräsidentschaft mit Nachdruck dafür ein, dass die Corona-Aufbauhilfen der EU auch Künstlerinnen und Künstlern und Kultureinrichtungen zugutekommen. In Deutschland arbeiten wir erneut mit Hochdruck daran, existenzielle Not mit umfangreichen staatlichen Hilfen zu lindern. Und im Rahmen des Neustadtkulturprogramms fördern wir außerdem gezielt Vorhaben im Theaterbereich. Das ist angesichts ihrer sehr zentralen Bedeutung für eine starke und lebendige Demokratie auch das Mindeste, was wir Künstlerinnen und Künstlern schuldig sind, meine ich. Wirklichkeit veränderbar zu zeigen, gehört zu den Kernkompetenzen der darstellenden Künste. Sie geben Utopien eine Bühne. Sie sind die Botschafter des Möglichen in der Wirklichkeit, auch in der europäischen Wirklichkeit. Und dass wir alle ein Land, eine Welt, ein Volk sind, davon träumte nicht nur John Lennon. Alle Menschen werden Brüder, heißt es bei Ludwig van Beethoven im berühmten Schlusschor der 9. Symphonie, die zur Europahymne wurde. Mit ihren Träumen von einer besseren Welt werden Künstlerinnen und Künstler auch in Zukunft Mut und Aufbruchstimmung wecken. Damit werden sie Menschen weiterhin über Grenzen hinweg miteinander in Fühlung bringen, selbst in Zeiten, in denen Solidarität bedeutet, Abstand zu halten. In diesem Sinne wünsche ich dem European Theatre Forum viel Erfolg und hoffe, dass daraus eine starke Stimme der darstellenden Künste in Europa wird. Okay. Okay, so we want to express our warm thanks to the Minister of State, Monica Grütters, for making this first European Theatre Forum possible in the frame of the German presidency of the Council of the European Union. And up next, since uh, Saxony is the German land where Dresden is situated, and as such the hosting region for this first forum. Here are a few welcoming words by Barbara Klepsch, Saxon State Minister for Culture and Tourism. Liebe Freunde der Theaterwelt, ich grüße Sie alle herzlich aus Dresden. Leider kann ich Sie nicht persönlich begrüßen. Warum? Das wissen wir alle. Ich kann nur von Herzen sagen, es ist gut, vorsichtig und verantwortungsvoll zu agieren. 
Schade ist es dennoch, sehr, sehr schade. Das Stadtschauspiel ist nicht nur virtuell ein hervorragender Gastgeber. Ich danke dem Intendanten Joachim Clement und seinem Team ganz herzlich, die europäische Theaterszene von Dresden aus zusammenzubringen. Während der deutschen EU-Ratspräsidentschaft ist es gut, dass die vielfältige Theaterlandschaft Europas eine Plattform bekommt. Das gilt für eine wichtige Vernetzung immer, aber es ist gerade in dieser Pandemiezeit noch dringender denn je, sich auszutauschen. In Sachsen gibt es über 80 Spielstätten im öffentlichen Bereich, getragen durch den Staat, von Städten und Gemeinden, aber auch sehr viel durch privates Engagement. Wir stehen damit für eine kulturelle Dichte, die Europa in vielen Regionen ausmacht. Wir leben von den Orten, an denen gesellschaftliche Auseinandersetzung möglich ist. Sie findet statt durch die Begegnung von Künstlerinnen und Künstlern mit ihrem Publikum. Diese gesellschaftlichen Foren, denen unsere Theater einen Raum geben, fehlen teilweise. Unsere gemeinsame Aufgabe ist es, dass das Theater in dieser Pandemie nicht untergeht, dass es gelingt durch Angebote, obwohl der Gesundheitsschutz beachtet wird. Und es gelingt durch staatliche und gesellschaftliche Rückendeckung, dass auch wir künftig die vielfältigen Theater brauchen. Für das Theaterforum ist der Weg über das Internet eine Chance, dass es stattfinden kann. Ja, darüber bin ich froh. Wir alle wissen aber, dass die digitale Welt kein dauerhafter Ort für das Erlebnis Theater sein kann. Deshalb hoffe ich, dass Sie sich beim Europäischen Theaterforum über Wege austauschen können, um durch die Krise zu kommen und wie Theater danach wieder vollkommen mit Energie durchstarten kann. Ich wünsche Ihnen gute Diskussionen und lade Sie herzlich ein, recht bald dann nach Sachsen zu kommen. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you very much. And last but not least, um, but we want to express our most warm thanks for hosting us at Staatsschauspiel Dresden, even if this has to be virtually, to Joachim Clement, General Director and Artistic Director of Staatsschauspiel Dresden, Germany, and host of the Fast Forward Festival. Hello, good morning, everybody. Uh, dear guests and participants of the European Theatre Forum, as the local host of the first European Theatre Forum, I have the honour to welcome you. As the Minister has already said in her speech, we would have been delighted to welcome you as person um, and our guests coming to Dresden. Our city is located in the South East of Germany close to the borders of Poland and the Czech Republic. As an important cultural city in a region located on the territory of the former GDR, Dresden is an important place to creating links between Eastern and Western Europe. I would like to invite you not only to participate via digital communication in this first edition of the forum, but also in the same way to take part in Fast Forward, the European Festival for Young Directors. The festival was founded 10 years ago as a place for discovery. Under normal circumstances, Europe's theatres show to the audience their exploration and artistic achievements to the audience each year by presenting eight guest performances by young artists and companies from as many countries, rich in directing methods, inventive in the use of theatrical means and forms, serious in its examination of content, touching and entertaining at the same time. 
is one of the most important festivals for young artists. Fast Forward creates intensive encounters with young theater talents from all over Europe. The festival is a European theater platform that has already given a boost of numerous artistic careers, including directors such as Jonas Koro Petersen from Norway, Marta Gornetska from Poland, Antoine Bobon from Belgium, Bugili Barjukaita from Lithuania, Data Tavatze from Georgia, as well as Camille Dagen and Marion Sifert, both from France. The festival serves as a place for discoveries. Within four intensive days, one can experience the diversity and variety of approaches of a young theater that sometimes passionately, sometimes critically, and always inventively explores what makes stage art relevant today. Art also tells us something about the context in which it is created. And so this festival conveys something about the realities of life and the conditions that the theater makers in their perspective countries have to face and some time to fight for. What other questions and visions do they share? And fast forward, you can discover how multifaceted and multilingual young theater is participating in the future of Europe and how surprising and undogmatic this can be. There is, however, one dogma at the festival, one on the last day, an international jury will award a prize to one of the participating directors. The festival prize is an invitation to realize a new work at our theater in Dresden and to gain experience in a new artistic environment. At the same time, it lays the foundation for international cooperation. Sustainability is what interests us. To celebrate the 10th anniversary of Fast Forward with a special festival edition at work was not planned. But in the theater, you are dealing with artists and, as it is well known, they are capable of creating new ideas and projects according to the circumstances. With a total of 10 works from Estonia, Poland, the Netherlands, France, Spain, Hungary, the Czech Republic and Germany this year, you were supposed to experience theater life on stage while walking through the city and on the digital stage. Due to the pandemic, we can only invite you for four full days of immerse yourself in virtual worlds to test new perspectives, to take a stance and dance, all with a necessary distance, of course. The festival is also a bridge between independent artists and established institutions. Many of the invited works were created as freely produced projects. In this respect, I also understand the festival is an artistic mirror to the participants and debates of the forum, in which very diverse representatives of the performing arts come to sit at one table with political decision makers, also to discuss the challenges, challenges for European culture and arts caused by COVID-19. The theater is one of the important freely configurable spaces of our democracy, a laboratory of social imagination. Beyond ideology, the debate about how we want to live can be conducted here without reservation. Theater insists on differentiation because only in this way it can help the choose to prevail and it presents ideas and concepts, ideas and concepts for life. Above all, however, it strengthens our hope that we can influence and change the conditions of our life and are not just determinated by them. The pandemic has shown how fragile the structure our structures are on which we have built our security. What we know that culture is a lifeblood of society because it encourages change and indicates what is possible, as the president of the Federal Republic recently said. But without 
solidarity, great attention, mutual respect and courage, you will achieve nothing, not only in art. That is why I wish you and us much of these in the coming days. Without these abilities and talents, we will not be able to meet the challenges of the coming period, whether it is digitalization, the further development of our audience, or simply securing our artistic existence. I wish you and us good encounters, lively debates, and much success. And many thanks to the organizers, Charlotte Orti, as creator of Fast Forward, and Heidi Wiley and her team of the ETC for the conference, for the intensive preparatory work and the good cooperation. I wish you good luck and health. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Joachim Clement, for these uh, inspiring and kind words. Uh, we'll be back shortly after transition for what's up next. Um, now we are welcoming uh, Barbara Gessler. Most of you in the audience might already know Barbara Gessler. She is the head of the Creative Europe program of the European Union. This being the only program in Europe that specifically supports and funds international collaboration for culture. Barbara Gessler, good morning. Let's talk a little bit about the launch of the European Commission's Theatre Initiative. And um, maybe we can start with a logical question. What it is the European Theatre In Initiative? Can you briefly explain us? Good morning, everyone, first of all. I'm very happy to be here uh, virtually. Like all, my, uh, all the speakers that spoke before, I would have so much liked to wake up in the hotel room this morning in Dresden uh, and go to the theater, uh, to the Staatsschauspiel to, to attend this forum. But alas, uh, here we are. Um, I'm very happy to, to, to have the opportunity to present to you uh, the European Theater Initiative. This initiative uh, consists of a set of actions that we are planning to have and that we have already started having in the area of performing arts and most particularly in theater. It has all started with conversations that, uh, that we had with the sector, with the networks. Many of you who are now here have been involved in these kind of also informal conversations that we had and notably also the European Theatre Convention and Heidi. And we have uh, come to realize that the Creative Europe program uh, does a lot of things for the performing arts and for the theatre, uh, but that it, there may be other issues that are at stake still for this particular art form that we would need to tackle. Hence, what we did was um, to launch a mapping with the broadest questions that we thought would be relevant to look at the reality of the German performing arts and theater situation in particular. Because obviously theater is not only the oldest art forms as we heard already this morning and the one that helps us think outside the box, which is very important for us in Europe, but it's also obviously the one that is very much linked to linguistic and cultural diversity in Europe. And hence, it's also the one that has it maybe a little bit more difficult to travel across borders to meet people outside the country of origin. So in this first mapping, uh, we looked at the major questions that were at stake and we gathered uh, 
actually all of those that are now involved in the consortium uh, organizing this European Theatre Forum in a first informal dialogue in Brussels last year at the Théâtre National de Bruxelles. Uh, and from there, uh, we, we had a whole day of very fruitful conversations uh, about what would be the most pressing issues that the European level would have to look at. Uh, and we came up with a set of questions and uh, launched a study that will be presented to you more in detail tomorrow. Uh, but we also realized uh, that uh, a, a place where people would come together across the European board, uh, obviously in the setting which is close to theaters and performing arts reality is close to a stage, uh, would be a very welcome uh, space for exchange in Europe, as it doesn't exist outside obviously very relevant festivals, but as a general meeting point for European theater and performing arts professionals. And so this initiative actually consists of all of these actions that we have taken so far and that we aim at continuing on the basis also of this discussion, of this dialogue, but also on the basis of the results of the study. Uh, and we hope to bring it together in what we call an initiative in favor of the European performing arts sector and most notably the European theater sector. So, um, can you develop a little bit uh, about the next steps? What are they going, because this is the, the first, um, the European theater forum it's basically the first official step um, of this initiative. And you say that the intention is exactly this, to, to make it possible further. Can you speak a little bit about these um, future steps? Yes, obviously the future steps. Uh, I mean, I, I want to put it that way. Um, um, this is, uh, this is already an advancement. It's the first uh, op official theater forum and I would really like to seize the opportunity if I may to allow in particular uh, to, to, uh, to allow me to say thank you to the German presidency and to State Minister Grütters and her team uh, for having joined us in this endeavor of, uh, of reaching out uh, to the sector together in the frame of the European, uh, of the German European presidency, and obviously also to the organizers, but we will have more, uh, more possibilities of saying thanks to the consortium and the organizers uh, themselves. Um, the next steps obviously for us are, uh, wait for the results of the study, yeah. which will also uh, deliver very concrete um, policy recommendations to us. And these policy recommendations will then base uh, will then be the basis of our future action at the European level. Obviously, we hope that the future EU presidencies will also take this adventurous route with us. Uh, and eventually, as you know, as next year starts the new Creative Europe program, we hope to be developing a more sectorial support approach for the performing arts and namely the theater sector. Thank you very much, Barbara. Um, these are very important steps and very important informations about uh, where, we, where we are in the present moment, uh, which is the situation of our sector. And we really hope that uh, this European Theater Forum will give us the possibility to make this important contact between the sector and the policymakers and to, to make our voices heard. Thank you very much. Thank you. Right, so 
let us now introduce a very important theatre director in the European theatre landscape, a savoir Serge Rangoni, general manager and artistic director of the Théâtre de Liège in Belgium, who's also president of the European Theatre Convention. Serge Rangoni was one of the first people imagining what a powerful initiative it would be in connecting Europe's key theatre and performing arts representatives together with policymakers. In um, meetings of ETC with the former EU Commissioner of Culture, Tibor Navracic, this idea fell on fruitful grounds. Quickly, other networks joined this idea and first gatherings happened. And three years later, the European Theatre Forum opens. Serge Rangoni not only has defended and produced all his life uh, European theatre performances, he also considers supporting up and coming talents as his major responsibility. He therefore will be joined by Maria Aberg, a Sweden freelance director based in London, now an associate artist at the Royal Shakespeare Company, Reunite What is Scattered Project Europa is not only an artistic project, it's a way of living. No, it's our reality right now. So welcome Serge and Maria. I would like to thank Mrs. Barbara Gessler very much. And this with particular pleasure because we know that she is committed to working with us to create the spaces to exchange and support that we need. My thank also goes to Mrs. Felicitas van Malinkot and Isa Edelhoff from the German EU presidency team who believed and supported our EID of such a forum. I would also like to thank the colleagues from the different networks and institutions who have agreed to come together for this consortium and, above all, who have put all their conviction and energy into ensuring that this first forum can address all the important issues that everyone wanted to share. Thank you for your ability to listen, to exchange, and to share. Finally, thank you to ID Wille and our team at the, the European Theatre Convention, who were as for months now envisioned, created, and organized this joint collaboration with all European partners for the forum to come into life. Congratulations for this great job, especially to our dedicated project team, Helen Gauthier, Ellis Burroughs, Josephine Dussol, and Juna Bogoli. There is only one path to overcome our fears, that of knowledge. For several years now, many of us have been hoping to meet in one place, to be able to share our commitments, our difficulties, and our challenges. In, for, in favor of our theater, dance, circus arts, and all the new forms that arise from them, wherever we are in Europe, in whatever sector we work, in dialogue with those who organize public policies in support of culture. Here we are, separated despite of us, but united in the same space of words and thoughts. Three days are given to us to tackle a number of essential questions and to explore this sector of the performing arts, which is so special because it's perfectly at odds with the profitability that is demanded of human activities a little more each day. Indeed, the labor factor is predominant without any possibility of mechanization in our field. The performing arts sector is under increasing tension between rising incompressible costs and constrained ticketing revenues with limited audience 
numbers and limited performances in terms of dates, as explained by economists Baumol and Bowen. A sector that is characterized by a disparity in the way it's financed in Europe, but also by a great diversity of functioning. Ensembles installed in city theaters in countries with a German heritage, even if an independent sector also exists and is strong there. And teams of artists engage for one production in the others a sector that is also characterized by sectoral differences. The public theater sector and the sector of subsidized independent companies of artists. A practice which is in dialogue with the territory, a community, but which since the 70s has become considerably more international, specifically at the European level, thanks in particular to the exceptional development of festivals in most European countries. An art that appeared on the European continent and is historically linked to the different languages spoken in Europe. An art that has seen its practice transformed over the last 40 years into multiple forms theater for children and young people, participatory theater, drama theater, dance theater, music theater, three street theater, object theater, classical theater, new circus, new magic, and so on. Always artisanal, it can also be sometimes a little bit conservative, since it's always based on an heritage handed down from person to person. Against the current phenomenon of our era of speed and dematerialization, it favors the long time of performance, the presence of bodies and voices in the same place and same time. But it is most often the bearer of a critical and political sense. But in all times, it faces several challenges. To address all the citizens of our cities with all their differences of origin, gender, culture, philosophical thought, to tell a plurality of narratives, to include technological evolutions without being enslaved by them, to rethink its functioning in order to reduce its ecological footprint, but above all, to survive in an increasingly commercial environment. This art, who is at the antipodes of profits. And then, beyond all these challenges, the time of crisis has become. The pandemic we are experiencing and its consequences that affect absolutely all human activities, which reaches what is the essence of being human, the sociability that allows for exchange, empathy, intellectual stimulation, and emotional enrichment. The encounter with the other that allows us to remain human because that's, that is how I recognize the other in me. Today we are all asked to keep our distance from each other. This is the feeling of danger that is induced by the presence of one's other fellow. And that person could be my daughter, my son, my mother, or father, my sister, or brother. This is certainly the most tragic and destabilizing consequence of the situation we are living through. All sectors are wondering when we will be able to return to normal. And unfortunately, it doesn't seem to be happening soon. The performing arts sector, already particularly fragile, is being hit with particular violence. Fragile because theater makers in their 
immense majority encounter difficulties in life, intermittency, low salaries, the status of artist that is difficult to access and not very protective or even non-existent in some countries. Since March, it's stupor that has gripped the workers in these fields. Then, anger. Finally, asthenia, resignation with this, this second lockdown. No more performances, no more tours, no more border crossings, no more festivals. The venue, the performance venues that organize and enable the meeting between artists and audiences are closed. There are thousands of cancellations. The hope of restart of activities is chased away by the fear of a third lockdown. For the citizens too, the, this absence of a place to meet, exchange, discuss with its cathartic or simply recreational virtues cannot constitute an impassable horizon. Can we imagine that our lives for months or even years will be devoid of cultural activities? No theater, no concerts, no opera, no dance, no exhibitions, no cinema. What kind of society are we talking about? And who will still be there when life can start again? This dreadful period is being used by certain countries in the heart of Europe to muzzle even more the freedom of artists who dare to express themselves. For them, for our fellow citizens, for us and our children, we must think together, artists, programmers, producers, intendants, policy makers, to defend and strengthen the performing art. All this will hopefully take shape during these three days of exchanges. All this, you will feel it in the project carried by Maria Aberg, the director who is carrying Project Europa. A few months ago, thanks to Tiago Rodriguez, we called each other with Maria. Maria, originally from Sweden, works in London and Germany immersed in a country that is leaving Europe, she was stopped a few weeks before the premiere of her show, which as was to be presented by the Royal Shakespeare Company. Ironically, a project is taking on a European dimension. In order for it to live with us for a few moments, we asked Maria Aberg to tell you about it. And I'm very, very pleased to host uh, Maria, please. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you very much. So this is the story of where we are now. Back in 2016, when Britain had been shockingly and chaotically pulled apart by the opportunistic and short-sighted Brexit referendum, I was invited by the Royal Shakespeare Company to curate a season of work about Europe. I appointed the German dramaturg Judith Gerstenberg, and together we developed a season of work which we called Project Europa. The season was intended to explore and interrogate European theatre and theatre making practice, and to investigate the question of a European identity, past, present and future. It was also a celebration, collaboration of connection and of community. The programme included three large scale productions, seven new plays by leading European writers, a youth theatre project, a symposium in collaboration with the University of Birmingham, and a specially commissioned photography exhibition, photos from which you'll see during this speech. The season involved artists from over 20 different countries, all identified and invited by myself and Judith. For me personally, it was work that I had waited a lifetime to make. I grew up in Sweden, I moved to Italy as an 18 year old and from there I applied to drama school in London, where I ended up staying for over 20 years, with brief stints in Ireland and Berlin. My entire working life has been made possible by the open borders of Europe, by the communal effort of putting into practice an ideal of a shared and peaceful future. And my practice as an artist is deeply rooted in Europe, 
its traditions, innovations and complexities. When we started working on Project Europa almost four years ago, it sometimes felt like the idea was an enormous mountain that we'd set out to climb, where the opening night of the first show on April 16th, 2020, was our equivalent of reaching base camp. It was to be the first time the audience would meet the actors on stage, the first time we would set off those theatrical fireworks into the sky that symbolized everything the season stood for. Of course, back then, right at the start, the entire season was just an idea as intangible and unpredictable as ideas often are. Projecting into the future is always uncertain. You have to allow yourself to be led, not even by anything as solid as, an, as a vision, but by a notion, a hunch. And you have to trust that others will support and amplify this intangible notion. Reaching the summit is a gamble, and the only thing you can count on is risk. If our starting shot was the 2016 referendum, it quickly became obvious that Brexit could and should not be the North Star in our thinking. It seemed reductive, even as an example of the very insularity that had resulted in the shocking re referendum result, to focus on an issue so binary and simplistic. We had to widen our perspective. So, how could we respond to the situation in a way that didn't just enhance the political division in the UK and drove our audiences even further into their already bitterly entrenched yes and no positions? It seemed clear to us that the gesture of the work had to point towards the future, not in a naively optimistic way, not in a way that offered solutions. As everybody knows it's not the job of artists to offer solutions, thank, thank God, but in a way that enabled open and robust debate and an acceptance of contradictory perspectives to create a sort of temporary community, both on the stage and in the auditorium. But we also had to deal with the question of Europe itself. What is it? Is it about the geographical area or the EU? Is it a, about the cultural landscape or the political one? Is it um, a place of memory and nostalgia, the birthplace of civilization, or is it the scene of some of the most uncivilized atrocities this world has ever seen? The answer is, of course, entirely subjective ever-changing and entirely unreliable. There is no singular narrative, no definitive perspective on Europe. We decided to put this subjectivity, this unreliability at the heart of our process. A project like this is by its very nature idealistic and the very making of it embodies exactly the themes it represents on stage. How do we live together? How do we collaborate across borders? How do we allow the subjective realities of one another to inspire curiosity and empathy? In order to create our own temporary community of collaborators, me and Judith set out to find artists who shared our excitement for these knotty and unanswerable questions. We looked for directors, writers, actors and designers and invited them to London and Stratford to hear their ideas. We wanted as much as was possible to represent as many different aesthetics, languages and lived experiences as we could. Judith sent me Patrick O'Rednick's brilliant Czech novel Europeana and suggested I direct it. This inventive text fundamentally deals with the impossibility of finding a singular narrative and the multitude versions of history and memory that can and must exist simultaneously. It seemed to perfectly encapsulate the themes of the season, and I immediately fell in love with the impossible task of directing it. Barbara Frey joined us from Switzerland to work on a distilled and contemporary version of Per Gint. Tiago Rodriguez flew over from Lisbon to talk to us about his formative theatrical experiences in Belgium and to propose directing his own adaptations of both of Jose Saramago's brilliant novels, Blindness and Unseeing. Matthias Andersson joined us from Sweden and started working with disadvantaged young people from all over the UK on their own personal stories. Writers joined us and tackled the question of what is Europe from in their own uh, imaginative, playful, complex ways. Davide Carnevali, Yilis Chaka, Teodora Dimova, Sivan Ben Yishai, Christos Economou, Shumona Sinha and Sean. Our designers Bettina Maya, Ana Ines Javares Pita, and Jose Capella started to get to grips with the wooden O that is the Swan Theatre in Stratford-upon-Avon. As we went on, the intangible became more real. More and more brilliant, inspirational artists joined us to build Project Europa, investing in this idealistic, hopeful notion, lending their imagination and creativity to the idea of something that did not yet exist, but which would, at some point, become our lived reality. 
Of course, international collaboration isn't always easy. Developing a shared language to understand aesthetic, reconciling vast differences in funding, and navigating those knotty moments in the day-to-day -day working and making, like differences in how rehearsal rooms are run and how actors are involved in the creative process, is time-consuming, complex, and challenging. Holding space for a multitude of perspectives requires patience and care, and creating a community, no matter how temporary, is hard work. It's also possibly the most vital and necessary thing an artist can do. Creating a community means drawing a circle in the sand and saying, in here, everything is allowed. In here, we can practice discord, division and disagreement, test ideas, let our convictions crash into others and step out again, slightly changed. It's creating the space, often literally, to do the hard and sometimes uncomfortable work of being human as a collective. Project Europa was fueled by artists drawing circles in sand. Barbara Frey was carefully constructing an intimate musical internal world in Per Gint for her collaborators and audiences. Tiago Rodriguez was getting to know his actors and beginning to create a world based on their unique perspectives and sensibilities. And I was knee deep in Europeana, trying to recreate a sensory theatrical re-examination of everything that happened in the 20th century. We all know what happened next. Turns out the unreliability we thought we'd built into our process was even more unreliable than we ever could have anticipated. A few weeks before reaching the Europeana base camp, the theatres in the UK and across Europe closed and all the work was cancelled. Every single freelance artist working on the season, every actor, director, designer, choreographer, musician, lost our jobs overnight. Me and my collaborators found ourselves scattered across Europe, isolated and quarantined, trying to make sense of how quickly, unexpectedly and completely the world can change. As artists in the UK began to comprehend the extent of the COVID damage, desperation set in. The pandemic plus Brexit plus a funding system which has been tilted in favour of an increasingly commercial model for years and years meant that the theatre community was suddenly on its knees. Huge organisations had to suddenly dedicate all their energy and resource to simply staying alive and were forced to let artists fend for themselves. Of course, inside the unexpected, the potential for change is hiding. When the dust had settled and theatres began to piece together a new reality out of the wreckage of the old, it became clear that Project Europa could not take place in Stratford-upon-Avon as planned. Faced with the threat of permanent cancellation of the entire season, we were forced to look at the work again, trying to determine if it still had a place in this new world. And when we did, Project Europa seemed almost prophetic. The questions that we had wrestled with in our rehearsal rooms were now the questions in everyone's minds. What is the nature of collective responsibility? What is humanity in the face of chaos? Where stands the individual in the tide of history? In other words, how do we live together in this new world? So suddenly I find myself with a new mission. I am determined to find a new home for this suddenly homeless season. And in the spirit of the work, it seems logical to look for that home in Europe. Together with the Royal Shakespeare Company and all the artists involved, I am trying to find a way that this work can survive. In the last few months, I've spoken to many, many theatres around Europe, interrogating whether or not it might even be possible to still plan for international collaborations when the world seems to be collapsing around us. It's my ambition and hope that the principles that guided us when we created the work, community, connection and collaboration, will support us through this next chapter in the story of the season. And it seems the majority of the people I've spoken to agree. We may not know how to make it happen. Perhaps the shows themselves will have to scatter across Europe just as its artists have done. But then again, projecting into the future is and always will be uncertain. And maybe, just maybe, this new nomad version of Project Europa might be even more poetically appropriate than the work we initially set out to make. Yes, the world has changed. Yes, it might be harder now than it was a year ago. Much harder. Almost impossible to realise our ambitions. But not quite. I believe now more than ever we as Europeans 
have to lean into the ideas that seem the most difficult to realize and to place our faith in the power of collective creativity, whether we are policymakers or creative practitioners. Because as a citizen and as an artist, I have got to keep believing in the power of drawing circles in the sand and asking people to step inside. Thank you.